Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Prophet Skitra on Normal and Heroic. So this two-faced boss is one of the easier encounters in the instance, but most of its abilities and mechanics are deadly if you don't deal with them correctly. So let's just jump straight in from the very start of the fight. So on the pool, you want to drag the boss so he's roughly in the center of the room. The raid should stack around 15 yards away from the boss, slightly behind melee. And this is for the Shred Psyche debuff. This is applied to a random player, and after 5 seconds it will expire and spawn an ad on top of that player's location. This ad will immediately begin to cast Outburst, which deals gigantic raid-wide damage which is reduced by distance drastically. Having the raid stand away from the boss and having the player with the debuff move to the opposite side of the boss to spawn the ad generates enough distance for this damage to be manageable. Melee and tanks just need to make sure that they also move away even if it's only 10 yards just before the ad finishes its first cast. Once that cast is finished, you can then all immediately swap to the ad and kill it off, whilst it is dealing far lower raid-wide damage that isn't affected by distance. Also for the raid to watch out for on Heroic is Images of Absolution. These will spawn on one side of the room and begin to move across. Any players caught under them are more or less one-shot. These however can be crowd controlled, mass routes probably being the most effective. So when they spawn, instantly crowd control the ones that are moving towards the raid and ignore the rest. After around 30 seconds, their damage immunity will drop and they can be killed off by a single hit as they only have one health. Last to mention for this phase is the Shadow Shock on the tanks. The boss will frequently cast this on you, dealing a small amount of damage while supplying a stacking debuff that increases the damage you take from this ability. While she could taunt earlier, to stop the boss from going taunt immune, we recommend that you swap around the 4-5 to five stack mark. Now the reason you want to tank the boss in the middle of the room is for phase 2, which happens every time you remove 20% max health from the boss. As soon as this stage begins, the boss will disappear, and the raid will be put into two different phases. You can still see each other, and you can heal each other, but you'll see different illusions around the room. However, one illusion will be in the same location in each phase. So you need someone from the blue debuff phase and someone from the red debuff phase to communicate and identify where the ads are throughout the room. And once you've worked out what ad shares the same location, you'll then want to swap to it, kill it off, and that will end the phase and bring the boss back to phase one. If you kill the wrong illusion, then the entire raid takes a massive burst of damage, pretty much one-shotting you. We recommend having a single player place down world markers as these can be seen in all phases. Whilst one guy is placing them down, the players of the opposite debuff just need to wait until a world marker appears next to one of their illusions, at which point you know which one to kill. To make this easier and faster, Exhaust's raid tools adds an extra list of key bindings in your options, allowing you to bind world markers, so you may want to use that if you don't already have macros or binds for them. It's important that you do this phase fast because the raid is gaining stacks that increase the shadow damage you take and these last permanently on heroic and the illusions do shadow ticking damage. So if you're really slow, you're going to have really high stacks and your healers aren't going to be able to keep up. But once you've got the hang of that, it's just rinse and repeat. But just keep in mind, the more phase twos you do, the more stacks you're going to get. So towards the end of the fight, you'll be taking far more damage than you did right at the start. So saving things like bloodlust and large healing cooldowns towards the end of the encounter for either the last phase two or even the last phase one is definitely a good idea. But that's it guys, thank you very much for watching. If you'd like a recap on this encounter, or would like everything in a clear text format with images and tooltips for referencing, then do go check out our guide over on Wowhead. A link for that can be found in the description. And we will see you all in the next guide.